What's up? What's going on? What's good, everybody? That's right. The Boxing Source checking in here once again. And I got a special guest with me to chop it up. Of course, he is in the super lightweight division, undefeated, 16-0, and 0, coming out of Capitol Heights, Maryland. That's right. It's my man, Mr. Gary Antoine Russell in the uh, building. What's happening? Uh, hey, hey, family. How y'all? I'm here. Oh. I'm here. I'm here. Yeah, that's what's up. That's what's up. I know they, uh, you know, we had like a number of things going down. Uh, like I said, the super lightweight division. I know you had your win over Rancis Barthelemy in Brooklyn last year, and so you know we're trying to see what's going on uh, this year. I know that you know you're there as a highly ranked contender at 140 pounds. So we're trying to see what's going down. Yeah. Um. Last time I checked, I think I, I believe I'm like third ranked number three. You know for certain belts and stuff like that. Uh, I try to stay tunnel vision. I don't really be looking at the rankings as much. I just try to get my victim out of there and keep climbing. Yeah. What opponents is more stellar? Who got what credentials and stuff like that? You know, but as far as me worrying about the belts and too much of a thing like that, I know I'm going to be a champ. They can run, they can hide. I, I'm coming regardless, you know? Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. You know, like you said, uh, in the rankings, uh, you know, currently I uh, check here, like you're number three in the WBC, uh, number six uh, there in the WBA, and I think it's like uh, number 10 in the IBF. But uh, you're there is like, you know, one of the top, you know, rated overall 140 pounders out there. So we we just looking to see you, you know, back in action uh, here real soon after your win over Francis Bartholomew last year. Oh. Uh... Now, now that's what I like to hear because you know it seems like people is like on the edge of their seats to see me again. You know what I mean? I get to show y'all some new stuff. That's what it's about, keeping the wheels returning. You know, and I definitely been doing that in the gym every day on stop. You know? Yeah, for sure. You be sharpening your skills. You know, like I say, you're sixteen and zero. But you have a 100% knockout ratio. Every one of your fights ended by stoppage, you know. And I think that's, you know, one of the things that a lot of the boxing fans look forward to because they know that, you know, once you're in there in the ring, you know, it's going to be some real action that's going to be happening. Mm hmm. Definitely. Definitely. You can't play this. This is something you can't play. You got to take it serious all the way. Oh, yeah. That's no all I know. Yeah, so like you said, you've been working out there in the gym. You know, you're there with your brothers and all of that, man. Uh, I know that you've been sharpening your skills there with Mr. Gary Russell and, you know, Mr. Gary Antonio Russell uh, there, you know, out there in the gym uh, over in Maryland, man. So, you know, how's it been going out there like in camp? You know, like you said, you're sharpening your skills there with your brothers and also with uh, also another Gary Russell that, you know, had his, uh, you know, he was doing his thing in the amateurs too. So you have four brothers in there they were doing their thing in the amateurs it's honestly uh it's in the blood it's in the bloodline you know what i mean i had to tell this story to one guy that used to train with us uh named francis scott bro frankie scott bro i'm sorry not francis but frankie scott bro he weighed 140 pounds but i was also wearing 140 pounds and although we trained together he always used to size me up i don't know if it was the competitiveness in him or not but whatever may have you uh, I told him one day, I said, man, listen, I know I'm 140 and you 140. And every time he sized me up, he was like, man, you, you look big, man. You look bigger than what you are and stuff like that. I'm like, nah, I ain't bigger than what I am, what you think I am. Uh, I know I'm on weight. Oh, I'm probably just above, like two pounds of that. He made a friendly bet. We stepped on the scale and I proved him wrong, right? But I said, you want to know the real secret to it? Let me tell you what it really is. He was like, what? I told him, I said, come here, come here. I whispered to him, I said, I'm built for this shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the blood, man. I'm telling you, we made for this. We made for, you know, you got certain people that got extra trades in their arsenal, you know? You could be a plumber, you can be a, a, a realtor, you can be an artist, but you got one special trade that you specialize in, you know? And I believe... Same with us. We multi-talented, but our special trade is like we know how to get down and dirty in that square. Very, very precise. We can turn to like a surgeon in it. Yeah. So <laughs> it's the same with the bros. 
amateur on over to the pros. It's just the fact that um, we actually been building our mental. You know, a lot of times, a lot of these um, obstacles that's in our way come come across as a uh, trial and error, and they can weigh on you. You know, burdens and stuff like that can weigh on you, weigh on your mental. We've been actually breaking through a lot of uh, barriers when it comes to that. You know, uh, and that's part of sharpening the tools as well. Because if you ain't right mentally in that squid, then you already know the rest. Yeah, the other guy might have the upper hand. He might have a better night. That's it. That's all. But we're making sure that we cross all T's and dot all I's. Yeah, that's for sure. And, you know, like you said, you I, me? yeah, I could hear you, man, for sure. Uh, and, you know, like you said, you be staying on weight. Um, I know that, you know, when the last couple of fights you had, you know, people were saying, like, they were, like, amazed at you, you know, like you said, at your height, you know, around 5'10", that you could stay under that 140-pound limit. But the last time, you know, I had, like, talked with you, you are like saying, like, hey, man, shoot, man, I could probably make 135. Don't be surprised if I could make 135. Hey. That's how it hey. is in the gym. That's how it is hey. working, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but at least, you know, you do your thing there at 140. And, you know, like I said, there's a lot of accidents going around at 140. I know that um, you have, like, a couple of uh, world title fights that are coming up. Um, yeah. You know, for me, it's like, man. It should be Gary Antoine Russell that should be involved in. And I know that, you know, they got Ponce versus Matias for a belt. And then they just announced this one. This was shocked me the most. Alberto Poyo versus Roly Romero at, for the WBA. I'm like, yo, like what happened with Gary Antoine Russell? What's up? What, what's happening? You know, you getting somebody that's been at like 135, now coming up to 140 and getting this belt, you know, title shot. But you got Gary Antoine Russell here undefeated, 16 and 0, 16 KOs, and he can't even get a call. What's going on with that? Hey, it's 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 still a cycle of things. You can't get mad, you know. Hey, they say patience is not the ability of, of waiting, but what you do while you wait. You know what I mean? And uh, like I said, it's an all-year-round sport. I'm always coming open arms. Open doors, you know, open door policy for people that said that share the same profession as me, that share the same field as me. We're gonna all get a piece of the pie. It ain't it ain't no jealousy, it ain't no no stress thing on, on my end. You know what I mean? Gotcha. I'm just waiting patiently. Everybody they gonna box themselves silly. But guess what? I'm gonna still continue to do what I do best. Come in there, get the job done, and be on to the next. They just as simple as that. Word, word. Now, um, I know that there's like another uh well-known uh guy that has a world title in uh Regis Pro Grace. Uh so for example, if there was like a phone call that came up to you in your camp and like said, Hey, you know, we got Regis Pro Grace here, hey, that's looking for an opponent, you know, his first, you know, world title defense. And, you know, get there, Gary Antoine Russell. He's like, hey, what's up? W would you be ready to rock? Would right now. Think? Right now. I say yesterday. All I need is about four more days to spawn. Give me, give me, give me a, a good a, a, a two weeks and a half of that. A spawn. That's it. It's a wrap. It's a done dilly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. Yeah, he's like, hey, he's like, give me two and a half weeks and I'm in there. I'm That's in there it. like swimwear, huh? Hey, I'm telling you, you can say forget the goggles. I can see. I'm good. <laughs> hey, yeah, that would that would be a definite, definite great fight there with you and Regis, man. It's like they talking about everybody, uh, like all these other opponents for Regis. They even talk about Ryan Garcia. I'm like, yo. Uh, you got you got Gary uh, Antoine Russell right there, man. You got, I'm like, hey, if Tiafimo don't want to have the fight, if Jose Carlos Ramirez don't want to have the fight, Gary Antoine Russell, what's up? Definitely, definitely. I heard Tiafimo, man. If he don't get thrown in the in the uh, loop, he's supposed to be doing something with Loma. I'm like, ah, oh, man, y'all already doing some wild mix-ups now, but it's okay. But like I said, put me in it. I'm going to do what I do best, get him up out of there, on to the next, and then I'm going to make it look pretty. I'm going to make it look good. I'm going to make it look real good.
Yeah, for sure, for sure, man. And and yeah. that's the thing, man. You 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 get in there, you handle business, and you you know you have that familiarity. Like I said, you went to camp in the gym with your brothers. You know, you got Gary Russell Jr. There's you know your head uh, trainer. You know, you got you know of course uh, Gary Russell as your chief second basically right, right. there. You know what I'm saying? So uh, you you pretty much had that you know camaraderie you know all through the camp and and once you step in the ring. So. Uh, you know, how is it like to like have that type of connection, you know, with your brothers as you carry on the uh, tradition of your father there, uh, the late Gary Russell Sr.? Uh, big shoes to fill. Big shoes to fill. Like I said, uh, shop on your tools is it also come to an element of mental capacity. And like like I said, right now, that's all that's all we've been working on as far as being familiar Familiarize with the sport is second nature. Familiarize with training is second nature. We know what we got to do when we step foot in the gym. We know what we got to do when we got to critique ourselves. But filling the shoes, it, it don't just come with the physicality. It come with the, the mental as well. And mentally, uh, we all got to position ourselves to make sure that we make these changes. Not just changes for um, individuality, but for the unit. We got to make these changes. We all got to collectively communicate to one another and have the mental capacity to kind of like dig down into ourselves and say, hey, man, look, I got to do this. I got to take on this role now. Or I got to take on this role now. We all now have the understanding on what role we got to take on top of how long it's going to be. It ain't, no, it ain't no sprint, no 500 yard dash. It's a marathon. It's really a marathon. You know, so um, taking, taking on that type of... Um, but I say position and duty, it can it can weigh on you mentally because a lot of people aren't mentally prepared to make changes, certain changes. You know what I mean? So we've been doing that like drastically, to be honest. Being in the gym with them is like uh that's like food in every which way. Mm -hmm. It's food, it's nourishment. That's it, that's all. Yeah, nourishment. Can't stop, won't stop. Exactly. I'm telling you. Yeah, it's like food, but it'd it, it be like a buffet. You got all you can eat or, you know, like you say, iron sharpens iron. You're forever sharpening iron out there in the gym with your brothers there, too. So, you know, that's how that goes. Yes. Uh, yeah, a nah, couple more things uh, here before you roll out. Um, So you're there at 140, and I know that we done talked about a whole lot of potential uh, fights that are out there, potential matchups out of there. Um, out of, like, let's say – whether it be this year or to uh, to 2024, name like your top three opponents that you would love to fight from now through, you know, 2020, in the 2023 or 2024. I think you already called one of them out, Regis Pro Josh Taylor. Uh -huh. And uh, – I really can't say. I never really, I never really cared about the the underdogs. You know what I mean? Because yeah, you ain't got none of the titles. You're considered the underdog. You're a, a rising, up and rising star type stuff. You know, um, I was always a big shooter. So yeah. you had Josh Taylor, who had all of the belts once upon a time. Yeah, always been on the chopping block. Mm -hmm. Four grade. He just came out and won something. I believe it was what the the IBF WBC. He got the WBC. He got the WBC now. Okay, well, he was always in the chopping block, and he just came out and fought and won. Didn't look as good as I thought he would, but still, a win is a win. He was always in the chopping block, and past history, I always told Teofimo Lopez well, before we went to the Olympics, 2016 Olympics. I said, "Look, the boxing world is a big world." You go ahead and make some noise for yourself, and I'm going to make noise for myself. And when the time is right, you got a belt in the title, and I got a belt in the title, we're going we gonna to see each other. We're going to make something happen just for the fight game itself, for the love of the sport, the love of the art. We're going we gonna to make something happen, all right? He said, okay. You know, and we agreed upon that. We shook on that. That was years and years ago. You know, so if he was to move up and fight and win that title, and I got my title, whoever they put on the chopping block in front of me, it'll be them three. Them will be my main three. Um, 
a lot of people keep throwing Javon Ennis out there. Him and Earl. I like boots. I like boots. You know what I mean? A lot of people keep throwing our name out there to the point. I'm like, you know what? I catch him at a catch weight. Let me execute what I need to execute first, though, in, in 140. Yeah. I catch him at a catch weight, and we can make a pay-per-view. All that. But I see kinks in him. And I hope he watched this one day because these kinks going to stop him from his progress on being a great. He already got a good little fan base and he got eyes on him. But I don't want him to fall short. I don't. I really don't. They throwing him out there against Earl Spence. I'm like, man, shorty. You're a shorty. You feel me? You still got some, some adolescence that's, that you're going through. You mm -hmm. when it comes to the sport, mm -hmm. I see. I see you still growing, but you're maturing. Still, some stuff you gotta tweak, though. Tweak a couple things, and then yeah, that's when you you personally get on the microphone. Like, hey, Earl, look, dog, I've been shopping to my tools. You see me getting these these scrubs up out of there, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, and then he can go at him. But I don't want him to move too fast. I don't want him personally to move too fast because I still see things that he's still doing when. Me and him for, and mm. I and I beat him. Mm. You know what I mean. So it's like, dang, man, come on, man, get better, get better. You know what I mean. That's it. That's all. I only got those three though. But if Boots can be a little more patient, I catch him at a catch weight. I move up specifically for him. Nobody else. I call him out. I be like, hey, Boots, come on, partner. <laughs> you know. What I mean? You feel me? And it's, it's, it's no love lost, no hostility. It's just the love for the sport. If you feel some type of way, then hey, oh well. You feel me? Because we men at the end of the day, we, we got to take take it as is. If yeah. you understand, you know, if you understand what I'm saying right now, then I guess you'll never understand. At that point, when I'm in a position to do this, and I still do it, the fight is going to be the fight. It ain't going to be no slouchy one either. I tell yeah. you that. Yeah, for sure. I know, you know, like you said, uh, I think you was out there. I know I saw you out there uh, January 7th when, you know, Boots had that co feature bout uh, there at Capital One Arena against Karen Chikazi. And, and, you know, a lot of people had big expectations in that particular fight. And, they, you know, they saw a few things in there and they were like saying, I mean, Boots was like, you know, the guy, like everybody, like everybody that I had talked to, you know, in the gyms, you know, peers, other boxers, trainers. They were like, Boots, Boots is the next one. He's, you know, the next big thing. And then, you know, all of a sudden, it's like he fights Karen Chikazi. And then some people are like, man, is he, you know, really ready to get up there and, you know, face the top guys at welterweight? So, I mean, hey, I don't know. We, we got to see what he does here next. But, you know, like you said, hey, if you, right. if you feel like if you got that time, man, you can get up there and catch weight and say, hey, let, let's run it in the pros. Right. And it's not, like, hey, hey, like I said, I got to execute first what I need to execute at 140. He's, what, 140 something else? He's super, super well too. Yeah, he's a well 47, yeah. Different division regardless. It's not too too far-fetched. I can eat a couple of extra burgers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Yeah. I can get on the scale with some, with some sandwiches in my hand and some drinks. You know what I mean? I can yeah. get on the scale with some drinks in my hand. That's, that's nothing. You yeah. know what I mean? But definitely having a game plan is always the plan. You know what they say? The old saying, you fail the plan, you plan to fail. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. I mean, styles make fights too. And that guy, Jaconsi, he had a weird style. He was very durable though. Mm -hmm. You know, but you're not supposed to fight down to the competition. I expected him to get him up out of it. He could have got him up out of it. There still little kinks that I seen that he was doing. You know what I mean? Uh, I think it was just uh, something as simple as the, the it's sad to say, the crowd. He, he know that he's now excelling to another level. And sometimes that put pressure on a, on a person. They got to fight up to this potential or this expectation. Nah, you do what you're supposed to be doing. You do what you've been doing. They, they got you here. Don't try to do no extra little pretty stuff to all this. Nah, you just get them up out of there. Be, be strategic. Be on point, And be comfortable. 
Of course, you're comfortable because you see that this guy respects your power. This guy ain't got the, the skills to carry your gym shoes. But what he do got is a lot of heart. He do know what punches is what punches. He got a little bit of uh, defensive discipline. Mm -hmm. And he got a little bit of strength. So if you play around, you will get messed around. Because you don't need much to get knocked out with those little eight ounce gloves. And the guy he had enough pop, but I believe he just couldn't deliver it thoroughly because he had fear in his heart. You know, boots job like take the fear out of him. Mm -hmm. You know, aggressive, aggressive stalk down the speed, the slickness. He was poised enough, but he was still trying too hard, trying excessively too hard. And I think that was because the height. He was trying to live up to the height. You don't got to live up to no height. Live up to your potential. You already great. You already good. Like, what you mean? You know, what I mean? and that's that's that comes back to mental. That's what I say. That goes back to sharpening your tools. Yeah. When you sharpening your tools, it's not just skill wise or physicalities. It could be mental too. Yep, for sure. So I saw that, but let me execute now and I go up there. Definitely run through these people. Regis Program, Josh Taylor, mm -hmm. Fimo, if you move up and I got these titles, we gonna make it happen. It's our plan. Yeah. And afterwards, I'm going up. I'm yeah. gonna say, hey, Boots, for real. Yeah, well, yeah for real, that's my ahead, game uh, plan. You go ahead and get that unification here at one, 140 and then and then you can make that phone call up to up to yeah. in the camp up there. You you got it, you got it. Now, you were talking about, uh, you know, being there at the Capital One Arena, man. I know that, um. Uh, you know, a couple of folks that like talked about it. And I also talked with, uh, you know, Showtime Sports President Steven Espinoza on uh, what went down there, the main event at the Capital One Arena. I mean, it was just, you know, conversation, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, come on. It's like you can't even watch the fight as a fighter. That's the thing about it. I'm like, hey, if you're watching the fight as a fighter, you see things that other people don't necessarily see. But hey, I guess. Hey, you know, they're talking about Meek and, and, and Steven Jack and all of them. They were like, yo, they were like saying, yo, what's up? What, hold up. And I'm like, come on, you you trying to jump all over people, trying to get at those folks, man. Steven Espinosa's, uh, you know, folks getting almost trampled and whatever it is. Nah, I'm like, nah, yo. Nah, they wasn't happening, man. And honestly, that's what I was really, really mad about because it was no professionalism. And how people was really moving. Like, you supposed to be some big artist, supposedly. You feel me? You coming from somewhere that you know you're not you're not from. You coming to a place where you know you're not from, acting like you own a place. You better remind yourself where you at. Sometimes you just gotta have a certain level of humbleness about yourself. You know what I mean? And uh the way that whole little situation happened, for real, for real, it was a big misunderstanding, and he was intoxicated. We're giving Tank instructions on how to become victorious. Tell him, hey, man, look, the left hand there all day, which it was. He hurt the guy with the left hand. Mm. But we like to get it over with. Bring your hook behind it, your right hook behind it. Left hand, right hook. It was there all day. If you would have shot both of them together, you would have, like, whitewashed dude. You would have wiped the floor with dude. It had been over. We screaming it. Meek Mills, he's intoxicated, like I said. He's talking about, man, they, they betting against you, man. They talking against you. They rooting against you. Tank. All of us look back and like, what the hell? <laughs> like, we're very humble. Very humble, but don't cross lines, man. Yeah. So we got offended because we know the art of the sport. Like we we know the art of this sport. We over here like, this is a weird, until we look back and see who it was. And the oldest was just like, man, look, humbly, you need to watch, watch your mouth, watch what you say. He got out of pocket. You know, he said what he said. And of course he had an entourage. So his entourage gonna be entourage. Mm. They used to being loud in videos. so. You're supposed to expect that, you know what I mean? They're going to be loud as well. Uh, even even out the video, there's not no video, okay? This is reality. Stop stop what you're doing. Stood up in, in a defense 
in a uh, defense posture, ready to do something for all of us. Like, okay, well, if something happens, something happened, but definitely had some professionalism about you, yourself type stuff. Yeah. And it was something as small as that. Like, I, you just misunderstand a big misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. You don't know boxing. We all know boxing. We do this. You know what I mean? So he had a misunderstanding due to him being intoxicated and gladly didn't anything uh, basically germinate into anything yeah. physical. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, nothing else it, off that. it got hashed out. You almost feel walking like, come on, he's tripping up over your own feet. You you see that he's clearly drunk. He's intoxicated. You know what I mean? So it's like, oh, my God. It was an irritable moment at that point. Yeah. An irritable moment at that point. Yeah, feel you. But like you said, yeah. you know, as long as, you know, nothing escalated off that, you know, everything is all good and stuff. So, you know, you just move yeah. past that. And, you know, we're yeah. scared now. You know, like I said, you're getting focused. And trying to get in for the next bout at 140. Like you said, you want to take over unified belts at 140. And like you said, Regis Pro Grace, Josh Taylor, yeah. and Teofimo Lopez, and hey, eventually maybe Jerron Boost in this man. Let, let's go yeah. and get it. Why not? You know what I'm saying? But yo, That's yeah, That's I'm it. very thankful, man, that you took the time to, you know, chop it up with me. You know, it's always great to chop it up with you, man. You know how it is. And uh, you'll definitely be seeing more from you. And once we get news of your next fight, we'll be sure to drop it here on the boxing source. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah for sure, for yeah, sure, yeah, man. Yeah. Hey, like they say, like well, like I say, yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. So you must live in the present, man. I appreciate you reaching out to me. You hear me? I'm going to always be a open door policy type of person. Remember that. All right, you know? no doubt, my man. I'll check you later, bro. All right, King.